Putin threatens more strikes on Kyiv if West supplies Ukraine's military with long-range missile systems as calm is shattered this morning by first attacks on capital in over Ukraine's capital has seen relative calm since last missiles hit the city on April 28. But a barrage of missiles struck infrastructure targets early on Sunday morning. Pictures this morning showed thick smoke rising above the city skyline. Ukraine said the missiles targeted railway infrastructure, while Russia claimed it had destroyed tanks supplied by Eastern European countries, held in storage elsewhere. Ukraine's forces have managed to win back ground in Severodonetsk. Fighting in the city is taking place street by street, President Zelensky said. A barrage of Russian missiles struck Kyiv early Sunday the first major attack on Ukraine's capital in more than a month. The attack targeted railway infrastructure, according to Serhii Leshenka, an aide to President Volodymyr Zelensky's chief of staff. At least one person was hospitalized though no deaths were immediately reported, Mayor Vitaly Klitschko said, in a warning on Sunday after the strikes. Vladimir Putin said Moscow will attack new targets if the West supplies long-range missile system to Ukraine and said new arms deliveries to Kyiv are aimed at prolonging the conflict. If Kyiv is supplied with long-range missiles, we will draw the appropriate conclusions and use our arms. To strike targets we haven't hit before, Putin is quoted by Russian news agencies as saying without specifying which targets he means. The United States has ruled out sending its own or NATO forces to Ukraine but Washington and its European allies have supplied weapons to Kyiv such as drones, howitzer heavy artillery, anti-aircraft stinger and anti-tank jet. President Joe Biden last week said Washington would supply Ukraine with M142 high-mobility artillery rocket systems, or HIMARS after he received assurances from Kyiv that it would not be used to The missile strikes hit the Darnitsky and Dniprovsky districts in the city and emergency services had arrived to the scene, Klitschko reported on the Telegram messaging app. Air raid sirens had gone off around the time of the blast. Meanwhile, a Ukrainian counterattack in the contested city of Severodonetsk has seen Zelensky's forces regain control of around half of the city. Its governor said Russian forces had been on the brink of capturing the key eastern city in recent days, but Serhii Gaidai said Ukrainian military efforts have turned the tide for now. The city is now split in half, he said, after Putin's soldiers had previously managed to win control of around 70% of the city that is of vital tactical importance to the Russian leader's ongoing push to win Ukraine's Donbas region. According to Ukraine's Air Force, the long-range missiles were launched by Russian 295 strategic bombers in the Caspian Sea region, that at its closest is around 850 miles from the center. Russia's defense ministry said it had fired rockets at Kyiv and destroyed T-72 tanks and armored vehicles that had been supplied to Ukraine by Eastern European countries and were held in a railway carriage repair building. Ukrainian air defenses destroyed one cruise missile at around 6 a.m. local time after identifying incoming missiles. Ukraine's Air Force said that the attacks shattered a sense of calm in Kyiv, which hadn't seen similar strikes since the April 28 visit of United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. A Radio Liberty producer was killed in the Russian missile strike that hit the building she lived in, in the attack at the end of April. An acrid smell of smoke filled the air in the Darnistky district of eastern Kyiv with pictures showing a billowing pillar of smoke rising in the sky. Dot soldiers and police blocked off a main road to the site. Smoke billowed from the charred and blackened wreckage of a warehouse-type structure. Several explosions in Darnitsky and Dniprovsky districts of the city. Services are extinguishing, Klitschko said on Telegram shortly after air raid warnings sounded in Kyiv and several other. There are currently no dead from missile strikes on infrastructure. One wounded was hospitalized. The services are still working in the affected areas, a resident of an apartment overlooking the area with the charred warehouse said she'd been awakened by loud explosions in the early morning.
She said the site had been targeted before but without causing such damage that police near the site told an Associated Press reporter that military authorities had banned the taking of images. Soldiers also blocked off a road in a nearby area leading toward a large railway yard. According to preliminary data, the Russians launched missiles from 295 aircraft from the Caspian Sea. The Ukrainian Air Forces said in a statement Presidential Advisor Mihailo Podolyak called on the West to impose more sanctions on Russia to punish it for the strikes and to supply more weapons to Ukraine. The Kremlin resorts to new insidious attacks. Today's missile strikes at Kyiv have only one goal, kill as many as possible, he wrote. Russia claimed that it had destroyed tanks supplied to Ukraine by Eastern European countries in the strikes on Kyiv. High-precision, long-range missiles fired by the Russian airspace forces on the outskirts of Kyiv destroyed T-72 tanks supplied by Eastern European countries and other armored vehicles that were in hangars. Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor Konishin, the mayor of the historic town of Bravery some 12 miles from Kyiv's center urged people to remain inside their houses as there had been reports of the smell of soot coming from the sea. Despite continuing Russian offensives in Ukraine and the widespread destruction, life in Kyiv has been relatively attack-free in recent weeks, after Moscow turned the focus of its invasion to the east and air raid sirens regularly disrupt life in Kyiv, but there have been no major strikes on the city in several weeks. The Darnitsky district on the left bank of the Dnipro River stretches from the outskirts of Kyiv to the river's shores while the Dniprovsky area in the city's north lies along the river. Ukraine's state-run nuclear power operator Energotom said on Sunday that a Russian cruise missile flew critically low over a major nuclear power plant. It's probable that was the missile that was fired in the direction of Kyiv, the operator of the Pivdin Ukrainska plant also called the South Ukraine nuclear plant, said in a post on the Telegram messaging app. Reuters news agency said it could not immediately verify the claim. Pivtin Ukrainska is Ukraine's second-largest nuclear plant located near in the Mykolaiv region, about 220 miles south. Elsewhere, Russian forces continued their push to take ground in eastern Ukraine with missile and air strikes carried out on cities and villages of the Luhansk region, with the war now past the 100. The battle for Ukraine's eastern city of Severodonetsk was being waged street by street, President Volodymyr Zelensky said. Luhansk has been partly controlled by pro-Russian separatists since 2014. Severodonetsk is the administrative capital of the Ukrainian part. The Russians were in control of about 70% of the city, but have been forced back over the past two days, Luhansk regional governor Sergei Gade wrote on Telegram. The city is divided in two. They are afraid to move freely around the city, Gade said that Ukrainian forces had captured eight Russian prisoners. He suggested that Russian General Alexander Dvornikov has set himself a target of taking full control of Severodonetsk by June 10, or controlling the Lysychansk Bukhmut Road, which would open the way to Kramatorsk, the capital of the Donetsk region. All of the forces, all of the reserves are concentrating on these two tasks, Gade said. The events in Severodonetsk echo of the bitter siege of Mariupol's Azovstal steel works, about 800 people, including children, are hiding in Soviet-era bomb shelters beneath the city's Azokimo. At least 11 civilians were reported killed in the Luhansk region where Severodonetsk is located, the nearby Donetsk region and in the southern city of Mykolaiv. The situation in Severodonetsk, where street fighting continues, remains extremely difficult, Zelensky said in his daily address Saturday. Cities in the eastern Donbas area at the heart of the Russian offensive were under constant airstrikes, artillery and missile fire but Ukrainian forces were holding their ground, he said. Severodonetsk is the largest city still in Ukrainian hands in the Luhansk region of the Donbas where Russian forces have been gradually advancing in recent weeks after retreating or being repelled from other areas, 
including around that Russia's army claimed some Ukrainian military units were withdrawing from Severodonetsk but Mayor Oleksandr Stryak said Ukrainian forces were fighting to retake the city. Our soldiers have managed to redeploy, build a line of defense, he said in an interview broadcast on Telegram Saturday. We are currently doing everything necessary to re-establish total control of the city. The UK military said in its daily intelligence update that Ukrainian counterattacks in Siverodonetsk were likely blunting the operational momentum Russian forces previously gained through concentrating combat units and firepower. The statement also said that Russia's military was partly relying on reserve forces of the Luhansk region. These troops are poorly equipped and trained, and lack heavy equipment in comparison to regular Russian units. The intelligence update said it added that this approach likely indicates a desire to limit casualties suffered by regular Russian forces. Not earlier, Luhansk Governor Gede said the Russians had captured most of Severodonetsk, but that Ukraine's forces were pushing them back. The Russian army, as we understand, is throwing all its power, all its reserves in this direction, said Gede. Russians are blowing up the bridges so that we cannot supply reinforcements to our boys, who are in Severodonetsk," he added. Gede said that airstrikes by Ka-52 helicopters were carried out in the areas of Gursk and Myrna by Su-25 aircraft, on Astinovka, while Lisi Chonsk was hit by a missile from the Tikkayukum. Got for its part, Moscow claims to have destroyed two Ukrainian command centers and six ammunition depots in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Ukrainian forces are successfully slowing down Russian operations to encircle Ukrainian positions in Luhansk Oblast as well as Russian frontal assaults in Severodonetsk through prudent and effective local counterattacks in Severodonetsk. The U.S.-based Institute for the Study of War said late a total of 13 houses were damaged in Gursk, and five in Lysychansk. Another airstrike was reported in the eastern city of Kramatorsk by its mayor Oleksandr Gonkarin. No one was killed in the attack, he said, but two of the city's enterprises sustained significant damage. On Sunday morning, Ukraine's general staff accused Russian forces of using phosphorus munitions in the Kharkiv region and said that Moscow continues to carry out missile and airstrikes on military and civilian infrastructure, including it. The general staff said in its morning update that the Russian troops used phosphorus munitions in the area of the Cherkasky Taishki village in the Kharkiv region. The claim could be independently verified. The update also confirmed strikes on Kyiv, which occurred in the early hours of Sunday. It wasn't immediately clear from the statement which infrastructure facilities in Kyiv were hit. The general staff also said that the Russian forces continue assault operations in Zabirodonetsk. The Russians currently control the eastern part of the city, the update said and are focusing on encircling Ukrainian forces in the area and blocking off main logistical dot in the Black Sea, the general staff said, five naval-based caliber cruise missiles stood ready to be used, a threat that carries significant weight after Ukrainian missiles destroyed Russia's Black Sea flagship, the Moskva. Early tens of thousands of people have been killed. Millions forced to flee and towns turned into rubble since Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered an all-out assault on his pro-Western neighbor on February 24. Now more than 100 Western powers have imposed increasingly stringent sanctions on Russia and supplied arms to Ukraine, but divisions have emerged on how to react. French President Emmanuel Macron said Friday Putin had committed a fundamental error but that Russia should not be humiliated so that a diplomatic solution could be found. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba reacted Saturday by saying such calls only humiliate France and any country taking a similar position. It is Russia that humiliates itself. We all better focus on how to put Russia in its place, he said. Despite diplomatic efforts, the conflict has raged in the south and east of the country. Ukraine reported two victims from a Russian missile strike on Odessa in the southwest, without specifying if they were dead or wounded.
Russia's defense ministry said it had struck a deployment point for foreign mercenaries in the village of Dokni in the Odessa region. It also claimed a missile strike in the northeastern Sumi region on an artillery training center with foreign instructors. In addition to the mounting human toll, the conflict has caused widespread damage to Ukraine's cultural heritage. On Saturday, Zelensky said a wooden church on one of Ukraine's most sacred Orthodox sites has been destroyed by Russian bombing. Russian artillery again hit the All Saints Skeet of the Holy Dormition's Vyatogors Klavra, Zelensky says on Telegram, with a video showing the church in eastern Ukraine ablaze. The Ukrainian leader said 300 civilians including 60 children had sought shelter from bombs at the church amid fierce fighting in the Donbas region. Moscow continues to prove its inability to be part of the civilized world, Culture Minister Oleksandr Kachenko said in a statement. Russia's defense ministry blamed Ukrainian nationalists. Russian troops now occupy a fifth of Ukraine's territory, according to Kyiv and Moscow has imposed a blockade on its Black Sea ports, sparking fears of a global food crisis. Ukraine and Russia are among the top wheat exporters in the world. The United Nations said it was leading intense negotiations with Russia to allow Ukraine's grain harvest to leave the country. Putin said Friday there was no problem to export grain from Ukraine via Kyiv or Moscow-controlled ports or even through Central Europe. The UN has warned that African countries, which normally import over half of their wheat consumption from Ukraine and Russia, face an unprecedented crisis. Food prices in Africa have already exceeded those in the aftermath of the 2011 Arab Spring uprisings and the 2008 food riot. The head of the African Union, Senegalese President Macky Sall, said Saturday he intended to visit Ukraine after meeting with Putin the day before to discuss the wheat shortage. Ukraine's Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov repeated the government's appeal for the swift delivery of heavy artillery in a telecast address to the Globesec 2022 Forum on International Security Saturday. If Kyiv gets the equipment they had asked for, he said, I cannot forecast definitely what month we will kick them out, but I hope and it's absolutely a realistic plan, to do it this dot away from the battlefield, Ukraine will be fighting for victory over Wales in Sunday's playoff final as they aim to reach their first football World Cup since 1958. We all understand that the game with Wales will no longer be about physical condition or tactics, it will be a game of survival said Ukraine and Manchester City player Oleksandr Zinchenko. Everyone will fight to the end and give their all, because we will play for our country.